Greetings to all my tech heads out there in the Kev Techify Nation, and if you're new here, welcome. In this episode, we're going to look at common types of networks. We'll be discussing networks of many sizes, LANs and WANs, the internet, intranets, and extranets. This episode is part of my series on introduction to networks. I'm Kevin here at Kev Techify. Let's get this adventure started. In today's world, there are many different types of networks, many different sizes of networks. We're going to talk about some of these sizes and, and where they sort of fit in. Networks come in many different sizes. We're going to talk about four different sizes today to give you an idea of where they fit in. First one is our small home network. Small home network is probably what you have at home or your apartment, wherever you live. And you have your internet service provider coming into that $50, $100, maybe even $200 Linksys Belkin D-Link router. That network is great for you at home. A couple users on it, maybe a couple streaming devices, hook up a printer to it. That works fine for you. Second type of network here is the Soho network. Soho stands for small office, home office. So maybe you're taking it a step further. You're going to run a small office. You're going to have a home office. Maybe you're an independent person where you run your own business and you have your, your company runs out of one of your rooms in your house. That would be a, a small office or maybe a home office. You think about an executive from your company. When they go home at night, they like to work at home they, and, and have the resources available to them that they would have on their company network. That's what we're looking at. So we're, we're looking at a little bit more added security, a little bit more reliability than that small home network. The third type of network is this medium to large network. What we're talking about is a company with hundreds up to thousands, up to hundreds of thousands of computers on their network. They typically take up at least a building, maybe several buildings, maybe several cities across the state several states, several countries, it could span the world. And what we're looking at is a huge network. And here the requirements are a lot different than those first two networks. You gotta have the reliability. You gotta have the equipment to handle all of those users. Instead of on your small home network where maybe you have three, four, five users, you're looking at in a large car corporation, hundreds of thousands of end devices on that network. And of course, then we have a, the worldwide network and the worldwide network is the internet where we have all sorts of things going on. And this network is absolutely huge. Millions and millions of users are all connected into it, doing different things, using different technologies and protocols. And so these are the four networks that we're going to look at. Now, as we get into it, we're going to talk about lands and WANs. LANs and WANs, that's how we pronounce it. Not lanes and WANs, but LANs and WANs. Local area networks, wide area networks. Now, our networks, they can vary greatly in different infrastructures. The size of the area of the network covered. Once again, we talked about maybe having a small office or, or your home, that's a very small network, up to these networks that are huge. Hundreds of thousands of users, multiple buildings, multiple countries, states, cities, all these working together for the company. And so what we see here is it, it, you can build a network to what you need it to. And typically the most, as we talk about these, we're going to talk about the local area network and the wide area network. Now over here, I have a diagram, the local area network here in yellow. This diagram has three local area networks. So we have the home office, the central office, and a branch. Now you could think about this as maybe a small to even mid-sized company. I wouldn't necessarily go large on this, but I'd definitely say it's a mid-sized company. You have your central office. If the central office, this is where you do the majority of your work. But your company grew out of its building and you need to add another building in. So that could be your branch. And of course, we have the home office. 
at night, the executives, the president likes to go home and review the production records for the day or something like that. So we have this. So there's three different local area networks and notice what connects in between them. What connects in between them here is our wide area network. This is our wide area network and it connects those three up. And so a lot of times when you see the idea of these networks, they connect in and they connect up to each other. The local area network networks in order to connect those up, go through wide area networks. And notice we are using our symbols for the local area networks. This is our LAN, the straight black lines here. For our wide area networks, we're using the red lightning bolt. And also for our wireless, we have this wavy line there. These are the network symbols. Once again, looking here, this is a laptop. We have a printer. We have a wireless tablet. Down here in our central office, we have a server. These were multi-layer switch. This is a local area network switch. These are PCs. We have some voice over IP phones in our branch, some wireless stuff. Oh, we even got a printer over here. And so once again, now you're starting to see how these symbols, how these diagrams are built here and showing that. If you like this episode on common types of networks and you get value out of it, and depending upon the platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. Doing this supports the channel, which in turn helps me bring you more great content. Subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell to be alerted every time I release a new episode. You can also visit my website at kevtechify.com for all of my details on how to get these episodes in video and podcast form. We're going to continue on. We're going to talk a little bit about the LAN. The LAN is typically defined by a limited geographical area now it's a moving target what that area is how big it is i can't necessarily say it's defined by 50 square yards i can't do that the, i can give you some examples what they are a local area network could be set up to be a room a local area network could be set up to be a building in some situations a local area network could be set up to span all the floors in the building or a couple floors in a building it's however you design your network, however you want to make that network best serve you. Now, local area networks are typically administered by a single organization. Everybody, everything you see in this network right here is going to be administered by one person, typically you at this point in time. Local area networks traditionally have high speeds. Nowadays, we see gigabit to the desktop, gigabit speeds to the desktop, where we're starting to see 10 gigs in some places where they need higher bandwidth to the desktop. Data centers for a local area network in a data center, we're seeing 10 gigs or even faster than that. One of the things that helps me define what a local area network is, is the ownership of it. If you or a single person owns and controls all of that network, you paid for it. You paid for the wiring. You paid for the routers, the switches, the PCs, the cabling. You paid the electric bill. Typically, that is your local area network. Now, a wide area network interconnects lands. So you're going from your central office to your branch office. You have to have some way to connect those up. That is done by this red right red lightning bolt here in the middle that is our wide area network typically it's over a larger geographical region now what does that mean i can give you some examples a lot of times it's from one building to another building it's across the city across the state across the country across an ocean around the world that is typically a wide area network I do know of some instances that wide area connect, wide area networks connect up different floors in a building. Each floor in a building is a different local area network and to connect those up, you have to have a wide area network or you connect them into a router. So I do know of wide area networks that run in a building. 
It's how do you design that network? And as we work through this series, we're gonna hopefully give you the tools that you can make that decision. Typically it's a lower speed. Like I talked about, we got 10 gig to the desktop for our local area network. 10 gig on a WAN connection, you normally don't get. You normally don't get that. But in today's world, there are new specifications, there's new technologies that are getting these speeds faster and faster. And like I said, ownership usually helps me define if it's a LAN connection or a WAN connection, wide area or local area network. In a wide area network, ownership typically resides with somebody else. Typically it's a public utility, it's a telephone company, it's a cable provider, something like that. You have a lease or an agreement with these people to provide you a service, to provide you internet service to get this. You don't own the equipment. Maybe you own the modem in your house, but you don't own that network to get all that data to you. Think about your house, your house. You own everything up to that $50 Linksys Belkin D-Link router. Normally after that, that's all from your internet service provider. A lot of times they own the modem, but then they definitely own everything else. That infrastructure, the wires running up to your house, the trunks running down the road, the switches and all that other equipment is owned by your internet service provider. You pay them a monthly fee and they give you internet service. So lands you typically own, WANs, you have an agreement with an internet service provider. The internet. The internet is this huge collection of networks. LANs and WANs, getting them all working together. A lot of times we have different LANs. LANs can be in your company, in your house. They can be in data centers connecting up to servers that serve you your data. WANs connect them together. So that way you, you at your house can connect into the data center that has the server for the data you need. They're not, the internet's not owned by any individual or group, which is good for us. So we have that freedom of speech, even though there's been some some things lately about that at the governmental level where that's all going but there's a whole bunch of group that develops all these standards and we're going to get into some of these groups and what they're responsible for we're going to talk about some of their specifications but i mean stuff from designing the end of a cable how wide should it be how tall should it be how far should it stick into that port the electricity the current to the amperage all that stuff is there to the protocols. How do we encode our data? So all these organizations go together to make us the internet. Next step here is we need to talk about how we share our data. How do we share our data? And this is typically at a corporate level. When we share our data, who do we share it with? Starting at the middle here. And what we're going to be talking about is intranets, extranets, and the internet. When we start here, we have this intranet. Notice it says company only. So people on your network, people in your building, inside of your company walls, they have access to that data. Yes, there probably is some authorization where they have to log into an account to get the correct permissions, but basically it's company authorized people accessing this data. Now, what is this data? It could be your enterprise resource planning package where they're scheduling, payroll, um, receipts, accounting, vendors, suppliers, all that information. So you wanna restrict that access to just company people. And that's what we're doing. The extranet here, a little bit different here, the extranet is you making the conscious decision to share some of your data with trusted people, people you trust. Now, what would be an example of that? You, your supplier, they make you widgets. You give them access to look at your schedule on your int intranet. They're coming from the outside, so we've extended it out. We, we extended the ability to look at our data outside of our network. That's our extranet. 
but we give them the ability to look at our schedule to see that we're going to build so many products that we're going to need a hundred widgets on Tuesday so we can build our products so we can make our shipment so that they can now plan saying we have to have a hundred widgets to them on Tuesday. What do we have to do in our process to schedule that? You could give it to one of your customers and say, okay, we'll, we work with you long enough. We, you trust us. We both know each other's cultures that when you need a hundred of our parts, we'll let you go and place that order in our system. Once that order's on our system, it can get scheduled and then you can get your parts on the day you want. And of course, then that order is in your system. Then your supplier can then look at that order and say, hey, they need that hundred of widgets on this date. We're going to have to get it to them by them by that date. And so that's what it is. It The extra net is you sharing your data with trusted people. And then the internet. The internet would be for people ordering off of like Amazon or your company website where you go in and then say, hey, this, this looks neat. I want to order it. Or maybe it's an informational site. You've got frequently asked questions. You have manuals out there. This is where they get support. They get information about your products at this one. Anybody can go in there. You open it up and say, anybody with internet access, you can get there. So you're not controlling that. Internet, once again, is only people inside of your company. Extranet are your trusted partners where you've given them special permissions to see certain parts of your data. Intranet, anybody, or sorry, internet, anybody with internet access can get access to all of your data. It was my pleasure to provide you with this wonderful episode on common types of networks. If you like this episode and you get value out of it, and depending upon the platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. This all helps me bring you more great content. Please take a minute to subscribe to my channel. All my socials and contact information are on my website, kevtechify.com, and you can get all of these episodes in video and podcast form. In the upper right is my playlist for my series on introduction to networks. In the bottom right is one of my favorite videos that I linked just for you. Thank you so much for watching this episode of my series on introduction to networks. Once again, I'm Kevin. This is Kev Techify. I'll see you next time for another great adventure.